We've been having some nice weather. This should not be on a table. It should be out buzzing around. When I got the little PW50 a couple weeks ago, it had a lot of problems, but three of them were critical. The engine didn't run, the lower steering bearing was dangerously loose, and the rear wheel was bent. We were able to sort out those issues in the first two episodes, and now there's just a list of relatively minor jobs. When we left off last time, I was waiting for an oil pump actuator cable and oil tank to arrive in the mail. Well, the postman came through. Let's see how these fit. I'll start with the oil tank. This belongs behind the front fender, so it needs to be removed. This looks like it's been kissed by a rose bush. The tank's little feet go in these two holes and the spout is supposed to protrude through the top, but there was a genius at work at one time. They used this area to route the cables and such. So we'll get these out of the way, then remove the handlebars and this top plate. Now the oil tank should just fit right in here. Perfect. One interesting aspect of working on old machinery is you get a sense of what the previous owners were like. Here's a tech tip. Don't use vice grips on the fork tube. I guess I shouldn't be too hard on them though. That's a non-wearing surface. Strictly aesthetics. The next step is to connect the tank to the oil pump using some 1 quarter inch fuel hose. My new actuator cable runs from the oil pump down here up to this splitter. There's not enough free play in the throttle cable to bring down this metal disc and make the connection, so I'll disconnect it up here at the twist grip. Looks like we've got a little tape situation. After this is removed, it'll give me enough slack to make the connection, and then when it's put back together, the oil pump and throttle valve will operate simultaneously. I'll put the twist grip back together. I mentioned way back in the first video that the engine stop switch was sticky, so I sprayed some light oil in here while I had it apart. Good as new. When I turn this, the pulley on the oil pump moves, but that's only half the story here. This needs to be connected to the carburetor. Let's go clean the carburetor. I'm hoping this won't be too bad inside. The engine ran. The only negative effect was an overflowing carburetor, which usually can be traced to a little bit of trash in the needle valve. And if all I have to do is clean that up, I'll feel like I got off lucky. So let's crack this thing open. Wow, not too shabby. Very clean float bowl. Very rare, especially for a machine whose previous owner said hadn't been run in some time. I'll just push out this pin. And here is the needle valve. It looks a little bit worn, but I'll clean everything out and see if it'll seal. I got the float valve put back together. I think it's good. Listen, worth a try anyway. It may not be necessary, but since I'm in here already, I'll remove and clean the main jet and pilot jet. So here's the innards of the carburetor. Overall, they look really good. There was a little bit of gunk on this tube, but nothing so bad it wouldn't run. Both the main jet and the pilot jet are clear. Look, you can see right through, and I haven't even cleaned these yet. But just for good measure, I'll give them a quick gas wash, then button it all up. That's back together. Let's put it on the motorcycle. We're getting close to being able to do a test firing. The carburetor is physically installed. I still need to attach the throttle, the fuel line, and the oil injection supply tube. The original one has been cut, but luckily I have a spare piece of weed whacker or gas line that I can splice in. I don't like adding extra connections, especially in a critical system like this, but I'm not about to spend $5 on the correct hose either. Hmm, somebody didn't get the memo. You're not supposed to use a drill bit to tighten up screws. There, that had been bugging me for a while, but I wanted to show you first. There's just a few more things to put on here, then we can test start the motor, see how it runs. The air filter looked pretty good after it was cleaned and oiled, so I can put that back on the motorcycle. As soon as I remove these old stickers from my replacement gas tank, it can be installed. I don't want my freshly painted rim to rattle off the axle, so I'll reassemble the right side of the swing arm, and the exhaust should be put back together. The engine will run better, and it's the neighborly thing to do. 
This muffler has taken some abuse and the lower mount for the heat shield is broken. It's functional this way, but would likely rattle. Nobody likes an errant rattle. So let's fix it. First thing I'll do is remove the heat shield. Luckily, none of these screws are rusted solid. Except, of course, for the one down here, but we'll deal with that. With the heat shield off, we can size up this lower mounting point. I'm not even going to try to remove the busted screw. Instead, I'll just flatten this area out a little bit, then weld a nut right on top of it. Well, that's definitely not the prettiest thing, but it should hold. Pride wouldn't let me leave that ugly weld alone, so I tidied it up with the little grinder. Next, I need to duplicate a piece of metal that looks like this to go right here for a mounting screw to go through. I'll use a flat washer that already has a hole of the correct size and cut off the sides so that it can fit in the heat shield. Okay, now for the challenging part. I need to weld this piece in here very carefully. I just need to kiss this joint with the electrode. If I leave it there for a moment too long, it'll melt a big nasty hole in this heat shield. And here we go. Let's see if I can be a soft touch. Big test, big test. Whew. Looks like we got it. I got a good weld right here and right here. I'm not sure why these little volcanoes popped up. I'm guessing it's because I was welding on rusty metal and maybe some contaminants vaporized and bubbled up to the surface. It should still be plenty strong. I'll put it back on the muffler. The heat shield fits, so the exhaust is ready to go, but I've made an unfortunate discovery. I took a peek in the exhaust port and the piston is scored. I wish I hadn't even looked in there. The engine has good compression and plenty of power for a five-year-old. But now that I know it's not 100%, a piston and rings is inevitable. So stay tuned for that video sometime in the future. For the time being, I'll grit my teeth and put it back together as is. It's possible the scratched piston was caused by that open oil line sucking air through the carburetor. I wonder if someone disconnected the oil injection because they didn't trust it and in doing that modification caused the damage they were trying to prevent. Have I owned this machine before? This silencer requires a rubber coupler to connect it with the main muffler. The original part is missing, so I'll fabricate something out of this scrap rubber hose. What we have here is a difference in diameter. So a little bit of this and a little bit of this should be just right. So part one, part two, part three, and a clamp. There, that's ready to come down. Sorry, no more pedestal for you. Okay, time for a test start. I wanna see if we did any good with some of these repairs. I'm watching a few things specifically here. When we began, the carburetor leaked fuel from the overflow, but I think that problem is solved. I put some mixed gas in the tank, turned on the valve, and there's no grass on the gown. Gas on the ground. Did the bride trip and fall? No! There's no grass on the gown, but there are some oil spots on the cement. When I put oil in the tank, the fuel hose that I used as an oil line started leaking down at the pump. I'm not sure why, but I replaced it with some clear tubing that I had, and I think it's fixed. As the engine's running, I want to monitor this line. If oil gets to this point, I'll be confident that the injection system works. I also want to pay attention to how the engine runs in general. Does it rev? Does it idle? Let's find out. My boy says he thinks he can start this. I like the attitude. I mixed the gas in here a little bit too rich for enclosed places, so I'll meet you around back. Whoa, 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 slow down there, Mr. Turbo Optimism. We went back there and we tried. My boy kicked that Kickstarter this many times. He was able to get the engine started because he's a champion, but it ran really poorly, almost like it was out of gas. 
The good news is we were able to get some oil in that line by the carburetor, but we couldn't figure out why it was running so bad until I pulled the fuel line and saw that even when the valve was open, barely a trickle of gas was coming out. So there must be some garbage in the tank. It's 8 o'clock, bedtime now, and my boy's leg needs some rest, so I'll clean everything up on my own time, and in the next episode, hopefully, we can get the engine running right and maybe finish up the project. Thanks for watching.